Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, and other role players. Tune in every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for your latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. <music> Hi everyone and welcome back to About the Winelands. Today we are talking to Giselle Kutsia. Giselle is the um, sales and marketing manager as well as the winemaker at Melissat Vineyards. Hi Giselle. Hi Will, thank you very much. Um, it's nice to chat with you. It's our pleasure. Tell me, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you became involved in the wine industry? Um, yes, yeah, so, well, I was born in Johannesburg, uh, quite away from the Winelands, but we always um, had wine in the house and um, you, you kind of get curious about how wine is made and um, we always came to, to the Cape for holidays and when the Cape Doctor blew, you know, we ended up at wineries tasting wine. And in those days, um, a lot of the winemakers and owners of the farms used to present the tastings and this was so wonderful and I loved the, the whole vibe about the, the industry. So um, eventually I started doing some wine courses in Johannesburg um, and every holiday I spent in the Cape and um, I completed my Cape Wine Academy Diploma too in those days. I didn't have the um, WSET courses then. Um, I met my husband and we moved to Germany and I became a wine consultant in, in Germany and that really opened the world of wine to me. Um, I was working in this wonderful shop and we had over 1,200 different wines from all over the world and my manager in those days said, you can't sell a wine unless you know how it tastes. So we did quite a bit of tasting from everything from white, rosé, bubbly, reds, anything. Um, but eventually I came back to South Africa and um, I met um, a winemaker that invited me to come and harvest for a couple of days. And then I decided, well, this is what I want to do. I want to make wine. I don't just want to drink it. And um, I enrolled at Elsenburg um, and I completed my studies in 2013. And since then, I've been loving what I'm doing, making wine and then obviously selling, um, selling wine and also doing the marketing side. Wow, what a story. That's so, so interesting. So um, can you tell us a little bit um, of the history of Malasat Vineyards? Yes, uh, Malasat Vineyards is a boutique winery in Paul. Um, it's situated close to the Huguenot Tunnel. So it's the other side of um, Paul town. And um, the farm dates back to 1693, so the original Decker's Flay farm. And the current owner, Stephen Richardson, bought the farm in 1997, um, and he started making wine in 1999. In those days, the farm um, only grew Chenin Blanc, which was delivered to one of the co-ops here in Paul. And he then decided, no, I don't want to just make white wine. So he started replanting and he kept the, the oldest two blocks of Chenin Blanc. Um, the farm is not that big. It's about 13 hectares and we've got eight hectares under vine. And then we also have guava orchards. So um, Stephen he is a, a farmer. He's, uh, he's got a farm in the UK. Um, but he doesn't grow grapes, he grows um, barley, wheat, and sugar beet. Um, but he's very passionate about wine, so he decided now he needs to purchase a, a farm um, where he can actually make some wine. And that is how he ended up in South Africa. Oh, well, what a nice story. So you guys are uh, part of the Paul um, Wine Route, so um, welcoming visitors to your, to your farm. So what can a guest experience when visiting Melisat? Well, we, we are very small. So 
firstly, when you get when people visit our farm, they may see Stephen or myself or one of the other guys working in the cellar there. And when we're all busy, all of us has a turn to be in the tasting room and present our wine. So we're very proud to be passionate and very personal about our wine tasting. And we want people to experience our passion. Um, so we, when we do our wine tastings, there's always stories to tell about a wine, um, where it comes from, why we make a wine in a specific style. Um, we also have um, a cemetery of forgotten wines, which is a bizarre collection of old wines from all over the world and from South Africa um, that people can, can view in our underground cellar. And then we also have a couple of food offerings. Um, so people can really just spend the day there in, in the beautiful farm looking at, at our mountains. Wow, that sounds awesome. So um, your wines um, that you're producing, can you tell us a little bit more about that and also your own um, winemaking philosophy? Well, Melasat is famous for our white pinotage. Uh, we were the first in the world to make a white pinotage in 2007. And um, so people come from far afield to come and taste the wine because first they can't believe that there is a white, white pinotage on the market. Um, so we like to experiment. We do things slightly different to other farms. And um, we produce also, apart from the white pinotage, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. We've got Tempranillo, um, Viognier, um, then also Chardonnay, and then an unwooded white blend. Uh, we've got a wonderful um, red blend, and also a Shiraz and a Shiraz Rosé. So our range of wines are quite big for a small winery, but um, it, you cover basically all tastes um, in wine. Um, our philosophy, um, is that we, we like to make wines that reflect the terroir of our area. So Paul is quite a warm area. Uh, we've got granite soils. Um, so uh, there was attention to detail when we chose the rootstock and the clones for our vineyards. And we want the terroir to show in our wine and uh, you can actually taste that. Um, we also, our, our wine style is European. Um, it's not New World. Um, Stephen, because he grew up on European wines, he always wanted to make wines that can age a bit longer. And our wood component is never too much. Our, it doesn't overpower our wine. It must just add a little bit of elegance and complexity to our wine. So that's so interesting. So, um, especially the story about the white pinotage, where did this idea come from? Um, well, the white pinotage, you know, we made it, well, Stephen made the first barrel in 2007. And um, in the late 1990s, early 2000s, red pinotage was hammered in Europe, especially in Britain, for having rubbery and acetone flavors. And um, I think our South African palates were, were just used to those flavors. And we thought, well, that is what pinotage is about. Um, but the British wine connoisseurs said, no, that is a wine fault. And a lot of research was done on that. And it is actually a winemaking fault. But Stephen's train of thought was in those days, well, those flavors are on the skins of the grapes. So if I eliminate the skin, let's see what happens. So he made the one barrel and he sold it at a wine show in Joburg, the content of that barrel. So I thought, well, maybe there's a market for this. And then slowly he increased the production. And since 2012, we haven't produced red pinotage. What an amazing story. So um, where are your wines sold? Mostly um, in South Africa, I presume, or are you exporting? Um, both really. Um, in locally, our wines are available in more specialist wine shops. Um, we also, um, it's also available in the Eastern Cape, where we're doing quite well with our wine. Also in Gauteng. Um, and then 
um, we're not really in big supermarkets because our production is too small. Um, we produce about 40,000 bottles a year, so that has to cover our local market and exports. Um, and our exports are mainly to Europe, so we're looking at Germany. Uh, we just sent a shipment during lockdown to the Netherlands, which safely arrived earlier this week and um, then to Denmark and then also the UK, then a little bit to the US and we've also exported to Argentina. Wow, that's quite interesting, um, uh, exporting to Argentina. I didn't expect yes. that. Um, yeah, actually the first winery I've spoken to that's actually mentioned that, so that's quite, quite something for the books. So you mentioned yes. a little bit about the, sorry, did you want to say something about the Argentina yes. stuff? Yeah, that was an interesting um, one because from there, our wines eventually ended up in Peru as well. So we've been in touch with some um, sommeliers and um, wine shops in, in, in South America because of that one export um, to Argentina, the original one. I quickly want to share something exciting. I have heard via the grapevine that the Fishwives Club will be launching a new lifestyle club soon. If you have not heard of the Fishwives Club yet, just know that you are probably missing out on the sexiest wine label out there. To stay in the loop, please quickly go and follow them on Instagram. The Instagram handle is at the Fishwives Club Lifestyle. Let me repeat that, at the Fishwives Club Lifestyle. Now, on with the show. So you mentioned the lockdown. And, um, you know, we know that the coronavirus has forced almost everyone to rethink their business models. Um, do you guys have any changes or any um, ID new ideas um, in place? Well, this, um, this whole lockdown um, influenced everyone. And um, the, the first couple of days was quite a you feel like you're in a maze and you can't get out of there because you make a plan and you start working on it and then things change so one thing that we've learned is that you have to be able to adapt quite fast and um, that how important relationships are and we were lucky that we start selling direct to customer that's a new avenue that we explored um, beginning of the year and that really worked for us during this. So a lot of people were ordering online. Um, also how it's different communicating with your customers in a digital way. Um, so now you have to really rely on social media um, um, to, to get your message across. People can't taste your wine, so you have to kind of tell a story um, and make it a little bit visual. Um, so we developed a social media plan, which was kind of in the pipeline, but we had to put it together quite fast to, to just reach our customers all over the place. And um, the other um, important thing is your relationships with your suppliers, your, um, your production team, your staff, um, everybody down the line, you need to keep in touch and um, you need to be kind of, positive about it, not negative. Um, and it, it, it just, um, it actually developed quite a few relationships, which was nice for us. Well, that's quite interesting. So do you think that social media is going to become more important um, going forward for your marketing? It will, yes. Um, because we're such a small team, we, we um, have to, be able to do everything and um, because we couldn't get people to the farm I our, our tasting room manager Alzan um, she used to do a little bit of our social media but now she's just doing social media and it's not just posting um, doing normal posts on Twitter and Facebook I and mean, it was also putting videos together and making it more interesting and our followership on those um, social media platforms really grew over the last eight weeks, which we are very happy about. So we gained a lot um, of new followers and people actually ordered wine. Um, so that was very positive for us. That is awesome. I see you also have a wine club. So can you tell us a little bit more about your wine club? 
Yes, the wine club started um, about 2013 and um, it is expanding at the moment. It is nice that people join um, and it's quite easy. People can join and they only have to buy 24 bottles a year. But we also have a, a wine club day. So if people order the allocated amount of wines, we invite them to, to, that, um, to the farm. And um, basically we entertain our clients where we will launch new wines and they will get um, access to some of the experimental wines, which is not for sale um, in the trade. Um, so we, we try to keep it very interesting for the wine club. Um, and uh, we've got quite a few members all over the country. It's not just um, here in the Western Cape. So in future, because of now all of this as well, we were thinking to not just having an open day at the farm, but also do it in, in the various provinces where we can invite our wine club members to come and join us and meet us and taste some new wine. I think I think that's a clever idea because I think the local market for everybody is going to become so much more important with possible tourist restrictions as well. Yes, and um, apart from that, um, because I travel quite a lot and Stephen as well, the owner, um, we go to these areas so they can come and basically meet the winemaking team and um, it's not just um, a marketing person or a local agent that comes and do the wine tastings. It's actually some people from the farm, which I found over the years actually works quite well to promote your product, not just to rely on your local um, agent or representative. Yeah, I think that personal touch, Matt, uh, you know, for every brand just starts, are starting to matter so much um, um, more, um, you know, in, in your modern day. And especially now that people or like you said, things like social media to actually engage with your customers is becoming an art. It is, um, and it's becoming more difficult because there's so much uh, competition out there. Um, every winery wants to get their wine on a shelf or, or in somebody's home. So the, the personal touch um, really means something to the clients, especially when they're far away. Yes. So, Giselle, your wine journey, what is the most important thing that you've learned? Well, through the years, um, um, it's uh, for me from a winemaking side is to understand your terroir um, because we want to make wine that actually speak from the area. It must be very distinct and it takes years to know your area and your parcels in your vineyards. Um, so it's an ongoing learning curve really. And it's a wonderful journey um, just to, to learn about that. Um, and in our area, we've noticed with a couple of farms in the area that there's a, a very specific flavor profile um, where we are, which is totally different to, to the other side of Paul. Um, the other thing that is always also important for me is um, the relationships that you built over the years. Doesn't matter um, who you talk with, the wine industry is actually a very positive industry and people are always willing to help and share ideas. And um, especially like a difficult harvest, you can speak to other winemakers and they will share their ideas and how they solve their problems. And that is very important. And it's a wonderful journey that in itself. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The one thing I've learned by interviewing a lot of um, uh, winemakers and uh, people in the industry over the last few weeks, is that um, the wine industry seems to be um, extremely collaborative. People are not shy to work together and to take hands. Yes, that is one of the reasons why I really wanted to get into the wine industry. Um, my first harvest that I did um, was a famous winemaker. Um, I'm sure I can mention his name. Yes, please do. Um, I met David Nivod from Cedarburg. Um, many years ago and one day I got a call and he said to me he's looking for a female winemaker to just come and help you with the harvest for a couple of days and I said yes 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 I'll definitely be there and that just was amazing um, that somebody would actually share that information and not be shy to, to bring people that he doesn't know from anywhere into his cellar and to come and help to make wine 
um, and that is how I would like to be. You, you need to share, you need to educate people um, on wine and um, help one another because this is what it's about and this is how we will succeed. So are you finding that young people are, um, the younger generation are interested in wine and the industry? Um, uh, yes, um, not as much as when I was younger, but um, there's a lot of young people that will come and talk and say, what, what is it like? What is the industry like? Is there a future in the industry? Um, but I find that young people are probably a little bit um, more careful in what they drink. I mean, the whole um, trend is changing. So it means that we also have to adapt to what the young people um, are looking for and what they are drinking. But um, from a job perspective in the wine industry, they're, they're, it's very diverse. You don't necessarily have to make wine. Um, you can be in marketing, you can um, be in one of the other industries that supplies the wine industry, like um, barrel suppliers, like um, the suppliers that um, supply all the products for winemaking, yeast, and all those things. It's very interesting. So you don't have to physically get dirty and work these long hours during harvesting. And I don't think people understand this actual size of the wine industry. I think that's very, very true. So the question I ask to everyone is to actually um, give us a wine quote. So can you give us your own wine quote or your favorite wine quote? <laughs> There's one that, that has been um, in our tasting room now for many years. And um, it's a little, it's not a philosophical, it's a philosophical one. It's a little bit more like a joke, but I love that. It says, of course, size matters. Nobody wants a small glass of wine. And in these days, I think uh, now that we can drink wine again, it's very important to have a nice glass of wine, but drinking, drinking responsibly. That's an awesome quote. I love it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's been such a pleasure talking to you and interesting. So, um, thank you very, very much to spend the time. If people are looking for you guys, how do they find you? Well, um, on our website, uh, people can visit our website. Um, the website is www.melasat.com. Um, and the directions are on there. Our email is on there. Um, they can phone us, they can email us on social media. Um, so we are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And, um, our tasting room is open, well, under normal circumstances, seven days a week. Um, and uh, we, we welcome everybody to come and visit us and experience um, our personal and passionate attention. Um, we're a small team and you'll probably see Stephen or myself there. And um, yeah, I'd love to see everybody out there. That's awesome. And at the moment, are your online your online shop is open um, for business, right? Yes. Um, people can go to our website or um, sell it direct. Okay, that's awesome. Giselle, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very, very much for spending the time. I know you're busy, and um, I'm you know, so people will in, uh, will appreciate the information. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Will. I appreciate chatting with you. It was very um, nice chatting to you, and I hope to see you at the farm soon. Absolutely. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description. Music